past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kira's show here, and now, I took my painkillers about an hour ago, and, well, I tried recording this, that was a bad idea, so, let's see if I can at least get this part out, well, and underneath an hour, let us begin. Whenever we last left off, Izuku, he has landed on Planet Vampa. Now, to anyone who does not know what Planet Vampa is, it is a barren wasteland, sort of. The best way to basically talk about it is, it's a world filled with constant storms, hardships, it's very uninhabitable, there's zero agriculture, and if there was a native species on it before, they would have gone extinct now. Since there is no way of farming the land, that I am aware of. Now, there's also monsters, and well, giant insects, and those ginormous bears that basically lay in the ground, or within the pits, along with various other strange alien creatures. Now, we will cut to Izuku, who is waking up in a cave. As soon as he does wake up, he's kind of confused looking around. As soon as his eyes do somewhat adjust, he begins to see. Hmm? Where am I? What is this place? Him going to get up. As soon as he does, somebody does walk in. My, my. Hello, Izuku. Uh, Vados. Where are we? This place, it's not the planet of the gods. Oh, my. Yes, it is not. Listen, you are going to be doing your own training. My own training? Yes. I've, over the past few days, I have taught you certain things about how to control your key. Your parents already did have a good start on it. You're able to fly and use key blast. Along with that, you're actually beginning to get a good handle on how to properly regulate your power. So as to not overexert yourself. Plus, it does also seem like your little instances of slipping in and out of Ultra Instinct unknowingly have gone down a little bit. R really? How can you tell? Her telling Midoriya that it's quite obvious once you look for the signs. Now, she does notice the faint aura around him sometimes, or at least the small temperature change. The slightest little detail she's able to immediately point out and understand. Now, she then goes on explaining to Izuku. His training on this planet is going to be quite simple. This planet is somewhat hostile. There are alien creatures here. And that he is going to have to reach a certain power level. Once he does, she will come back for him. Now, she then goes on stating that if he does find plants like these, they are unedible. Although, that would be quite rare to find them. If you find things like these, stay away from them, stay away from these, 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 and these. Basically, he's trying to give him a small warning. 
Basically, everything's hostile, and he's all alone here. And she also does give him a bit of an objective. To try and survive and make it to the end of his training. Now, as she then says that, she actually does bring her hand up and tap down her staff twice on the ground. Midoriya running forwards and actually trying to catch her before she disappears. Asking her to wait and to hold on just a minute. That being quite surprising. As soon as she disappears, Midoriya, he runs outside. And begins to try and look around. Calling out her name, Vados! Now, he would do this over and over and over again. Thinking that this is just some sort of prank. Or that she cannot be serious. She wouldn't just leave him on a planet like this, right? Even then, where are his parents? Where's mom and dad? Are they here too? No, that can't be. No. Zidori is thinking that he actually does hear something up in the air. Looking up and seeing ginormous animals flying. That actually somewhat freaking him out a little bit. Vados was telling the truth. This really is an alien planet. Him? Then watching as a giant green pit, or something big and green in a pit, jumps outwards and immediately smashes his teeth into these creatures, before slowly moving back down. Now, Midoriya, seeing that, is quite shocked. That shock not being able to last very long. As Midoriya begins to hear something. Immediately turning around and seeing one of these ginormous bugs. The thing immediately makes Midoriya somewhat scream out in, well, fear. Think for a second that this cannot be real, right? That thing's the size of a dog. Midoriya brings his hands up getting somewhat defensive. As more of them begin to crawl out from behind where it was hiding from along with the fact that they are now on the walls and they just keep going up. Midoriya, his eyes go from somewhat calm to immediately just shocked and scared. Before, he turns around and tries to start running. As soon as Midoriya runs a couple feet, he hears them all begin to give chase. Midoriya immediately letting his aura cover his body as he just takes flight. Now, as soon as Midori does do that, he begins to try and think. Okay, okay. Vados may have been a bit serious about that. And as Midori tries to think, he does look down, feeling something underneath him, or at least a power level shift. Midori realizes it's one of those giant green pits. As he looks down, he sees that it's a ginormous mouth coming straight for him. Midoriya immediately throwing out his hands and going to send out a large key blast. Now, as soon as Midoriya does throw out his hands, he throws both of them out together and sends a large blast in that direction. This blue beam immediately punching into this thing's mouth and straight through the creature a large crater, and blast being formed. Now, as soon as that does happen, this ginormous explosion does actually send quite a lot of these creatures in the area scurrying away, and running for cover. Along with that, it basically makes every creature that was going about its natural routine either fled away or try and investigate and scavenge what some would consider to be natural instinct. Now, the Nidori is staying there in the air. He's huffing and puffing. Realizing that that blast actually was a bit too much. Okay. <sighs> okay. 
Let's see. Midoriya, he flies around for minutes, encountering danger at every single turn, until he is able to find a cave that he can walk into. As soon as he's able to clear out some of the, well, insects inside, he does sit down, and I begin to try and think. As night falls, the planet does somewhat become a bit more quiet, except for the howling winds outside. Midoriya beginning to think. This is crazy. Setting down the backpack and actually opening it up, inspecting some of the things that are inside. There's a couple snacks and some actual food in here. Ah, oh, thanks, Mom. Along with him, then beginning to pull out the photo and at least the note. As he looks at the photo, he turns his head to try and read the note. Walking over towards the entrance slowly and trying to keep a listen. Using the moonlight to see what is written down. Dear Izuku, Vados has informed us that you are going to be training separately from us. Now, she says that you are going to go through a bit of challenges. Midoriya think that that is quite an understatement. Now, these challenges you are going to be going through, well, we're unsure of what they are. But do you just know? If you have to survive, we've given you some food. We think it might be enough to get through your training, but we can't really be too sure. And if you are on a different planet, well, be careful about certain plants and certain creatures. Her trying to explain the differences in certain meats. If a meat looks this color, then you want to cook it to be somewhat like this color. Basically, the difference between white meats and red meats, like chicken and beef. Now, this is quite weird, but Midoriya thinks he can somewhat understand it. Continuing to read the note to the end. There's what his mom wrote, then what his dad wrote. If Midoriya needs to hunt, be sure to try and use Key Blast. If he thinks that he can take down some giant bat or a giant wolf kind of thing, with his bare hands, don't try it. That would most likely get him pretty well injured. Granted, it would probably be a good story to tell, and if he gets a cool scar, that might be a thing. But in all seriousness, don't try it. He'd rather not hear from Mizuku's mother about what happened to him. He'd get an earful, and then they would probably inform Vados that they're not going to be training anymore. Now, meanwhile, back over on the planet of the gods. We do have Hasashi and Inko. Both these two have been training intensely for the last few days. Their power levels jumping from 400, actually somewhere into the lower 700s. They've been able to properly learn about key control, and train in a way that benefits them. This training that they've been doing has been more intense than anything they've ever done in their whole lives. Gardening, running around the planet with weights on, you name it. And then, there is apparently something that's the most dangerous task of them all. Changing the God of Destruction's bedsheets. Now, I don't think a lot of people would get that joke. Hopefully you guys do. Now, back over to Izuku. Izuku, he, is sort of cold in the cave. However, he actually does begin to try and drift off to sleep, curling up into a ball and trying to let his aura surround him, working on his breathing a little bit. 
and trying to clear his mind. As soon as Ultra Instinct begins to take over, Midoriya can feel that warmth coming off of his body, and it does somewhat bring comfort to him. Midoriya is staying like that for a few minutes, before he does eventually fall unconscious and into his own sleep, waking up sometime early in the morning to a sound. As soon as he does wake up, he immediately brings his hands up and gets ready to blast away, almost accidentally doing so and bringing the cave down on top of himself. Now, Midoriya then begins his own training. Him doing push-ups, sit-ups, and beginning to at least try and do what he's seen his own parents do. Now, he does some basic exercises, along with actually sit down and meditate, after he did have his own breakfast, which, sadly, wasn't a bowl of cereal. His breakfast was a bag of chips, and, well some granola, things that he would need in order to survive. Sadly, he didn't get his pick. Now, Midoriya, he begins to just meditate. And if you guys have, if you, I believe a lot of you guys might remember this. I'm sorry, I think a lot of you guys are huge Dragon Ball fans. Okay. Does anyone remember whenever they were on their way to Namek and you had Gohan and Krillin image training in their heads? It's basically where if you can't really move around very much and you're in a confined space, you can sort of begin training yourself mentally, your mental fortitude, and further key control, I believe. Now. Midoriya does try and do that. As he's doing so, he actually does begin to float up into the air and begin to activate Ultra Instinct. His focus being broken whenever a creature tries to enter his cave. As soon as it makes a sound, Midoriya immediately turns and looks in that direction. The creature immediately exploding into multiple pieces. And Midoriya watching as more creatures begin to try pouring in. Midoriya bring up his hands and just begin to blast away at them and try to take them all down. Now, Midoriya eventually, with many of these bug creatures flowing into the cave, does actually have to get away. So he runs over, grabs the backpack, and flies through a hole that was in the ceiling. Now, as soon as Midoriya flies through the hole, he almost gets tagged by a different creature, it actually being able to cut into his leg and try and hurt him. Now, Midoriya got away before anything serious can happen. But he did get injured. Him spending the next day, or at least two, running around the planet and trying to train in a safe place. However, he's unaware that this is actually all training that he's doing. Running away from creatures and fighting them all at the same time. He's using stamina and making sure not to stay in the same place for too, ver too long. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, he actually does go to bed in the cold night. And his wound does not seem to be getting any better. Vados on the planet tonight, she does watch over Midoriya and begin to see exactly how he is doing. Now, she discovers that Midoriya's wound might have an actual infection. And whenever she did actually walk up to the boy and look at his leg, it did look a bit discolored. Now, Vados then left the planet for a minute, before coming back, and leaving something inside the cave. She left the boy medicine, 
and some antibiotics along with some actual instructions. Now, Midoriya does wake up the next day, and he has a high fever. Midoriya confused as he actually does look up and see something new. Within a bag, he actually does find some medicine and some rubbing alcohol, or at least a small container of it, along with two notes. One being instructions on what to do with it and how to use it, and another about Midoriya's training. If Midoriya wants to do the best training, he can try heading over to this area of the planet. And he might be able to get some proper training in over there. Now, Midoriya, he follows the instructions. However, he doesn't follow them 100%. After Midoriya disinfects his wounds and takes some of the medicine that was given to him, he actually just stay within the cave for a couple of hours, trying to rest and stay calm. Midoriya, whenever he does get a short nap in, he wakes up in the middle of the night. It's freezing cold. Deciding to leave now before morning, since he knows that those bug creatures begin to migrate in certain places now. It seems to be a pattern every time he's in a cave. He gets to a new one, they arrive, or show up. Now, once Midoriya does actually begin to travel, in the middle of the night, he finds out that this time is the most peaceful time on the planet. The winds might be howling and basically insane, but it's better than trying to move through a dust storm. Or at least whenever animals and a whole bunch of creatures are kicking up dust. Visibility is a little bit lower, but it's safer. Now, when Midoriya begins to fly around, high up in the air, he actually does get a bit curious. Whenever he's supposed to be heading what he believes to be southeast, he accidentally heads I want to say he accidentally heads north. Now, whenever Midoriya was heading that way, he actually did discover something. Whenever he was flying by, he did notice a weird shine whenever he passed by something. He thought it was an actual lake, and he was kind of confused. Being able to actually stop and turn around, flying back in that direction. As soon as he did find what he thought was the lake, he's able to get closer and find that it's actually a metal box, before running his hand over it, and beginning to try and uncover it a bit more, finding out that it's actually some sort of ship, or possibly a room. No. Whenever Midoriya does actually find a way inside, he is quite surprised. This half-buried room actually does seem to be empty, or at least no living inhabitants inside. Whenever Midoriya does begin to look around and poke around a bit, he eventually does find the one in charge or the pilot. Whenever he does find the pilot, he finds that they are long dead. The only thing left is a skeleton. Now, Midoriya, he decides that tonight, he can probably stay here. The sun's going to rise soon. And this place is actually pretty high up. So, if he can stay here the night and he's safe in the morning, then this might actually be a good place to stay. Him, then, actually sitting down on a bench, and beginning to get a bit comfortable, letting his guard down as he begins to relax, looking through his bag, 
and eating, well, dinner. Him actually a bit curious. Ah, I wonder what mom and dad are eating right now. Hmm, they're probably eating something better. Ah, but I wouldn't kill for something warm. Hmm, it would probably be very good though. Hmm, ah, I would really love some pizza. Or, well, probably some udon noodles too. Oh, those are good. Now, with that being said, Midoriya does actually fall asleep here. Using an old blanket or an old piece of cloth as somewhat of a blanket. Now, with that being said, Midoriya has found out that there was at least somebody else here on this planet at some point. However, they're long since gone. However, this particular ship, there is a logo on top of it. And it seems to be quite interesting. It having a marking for the planet Sadala, a ship sent off from the Saiyan homeworlds. So what does that mean? Are there more Saiyans out there? Or is this just a relic of a forgotten, well, culture? A forgotten species? Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part. If I can remember to record it, because I've just been zoning out a lot.